Hey, welcome back to the show, Total Financial Solutions, Safer Money Hour. Eric Hallaby along with Jeff Gerard and special guest Brian Clark from Reliant Life Shares, a life settlement company, an opportunity for you to kind of diversify some of your assets. Now, Brian, uh, let's explain a little bit, if we can, what some of the, uh, like what is a, uh, an average client, a perfect client, I don't know, maybe something like, how does somebody say, well, does this fit for me or not? Uh, I guess you had mentioned the word uh, or the numbers 10% of 10% of somebody's portfolio. Uh, are there rules and requirements for anybody to just be able to walk in and be able to invest in something like this? Well, there are there are rules and regulations as regulated by California state law that says, you know, again, what we have to do to offer this and all the steps we must take and all the disclosures and, of course, who can invest in it. And you have to be financially qualified to be able to invest in it. And what that means uh, typically is that you have a minimum net worth of at least $250,000, not counting your home, vehicle, or furnishings. Um, then you know, if you're between that number and let, and you're uh, between there and an accredited investor, you know, around a million dollars, okay, you're limited to no more than 10% of your money. And I like that limit because this isn't something that you'd want to put all your money in because it is illiquid. But for a slice, it can make a lot of sense. So, you know, that person that has, you know, say a million dollars invested, um, again, not counting their home, car, and furnishings, they might take $100,000, spread that out over five or ten policies, and uh, have a little piece of several different life insurance policies. Then, as the years go on, uh, as they, each one matures, they get their payout. And uh, the payouts have been pretty competitive. So um, what, what do they do with the money? It just sits in the account? They can say, send me a check? They can roll it over to another asset? Absolutely, yeah. Any of those? Of course, we're hoping that if the client doesn't need the money when they get a maturity, and hopefully they get nice gains, um, you know, if, if let's say a $10,000 slice of, of this investment turns into $15,000, um, if they don't need the money yet, they can reinvest into a new policy at that time. If they do need the money, take it and run, spend it in, in, on something else, uh, take a vacation, um, pay off you know, debts, whatever they may need at the time, or they can do part and part. Maybe reinvest the original 10 they started with and keep the five. And so um, there's lots of options at that time. And everything's managed by uh, an outside bank. We use the services of UMB Bank out of Kansas City, a uh, big old strong bank ranked one of the, the nation's best banks. And they act as our escrow agent and third-party trustee for all the policies that we have. So they're holding the asset outside of your uh your assets or, or Reliance assets. It's not held in your bank account where we got to count on the strength of Reliant. Reliance there, it's a broker, it's, a, it's, a, it's involved in the transaction, but my physical dollars are not locked in a safe in your... Absolutely, and that's your, part of the beauty of this investment yeah. is when you think about where is the payment coming from, it's coming from the insurance companies. They're the ones that are writing the checks, and they're some of the biggest, oldest, strongest companies in the world. And and that gives you peace of mind. And then our use of this uh, large institution to act as our escrow agent and third-party trustee, that's an important element here. Um, you know, And we talked about longevity risk earlier, right? We use multiple third-party life expectancy estimations as part of our process. And what that means, Arif, is, um, you've got to come up with some idea of, actuarially speaking, how long somebody may live before you invest. And nobody knows exactly, but I'll tell you, actuarial sciences are pretty good. That's part of the reason that insurance companies have, have been successful, is they all have a pretty good idea. It's a pretty good science based on medical information um, you know, about each individual insured, uh, things like their height, their weight, their sex, their, their um, marital status, education, where they live, all these factors. Family play history. Family so the history, yeah. Mom and dad are still alive and they're 95 years old. There's some there's some potential push on that direction, yeah? Absolutely. And so I, I mention that just because that's that's one way we're trying to mitigate that primary risk of longevity risk. Um, and, and at the end of the day, uh, historically, you might ask, all right, what does this investment do? How is it done? Uh, and in 2013, the London Business School completed a study. They looked at... Um, over 9,000 policies representing over $24 billion in life insurance uh, face amount or death benefit as they call it. Yeah, it's a big study, went on for more than a decade, and they concluded an average annual expected return of about 12.5% uh, annually. And that I think most people would find very competitive, especially since it's a passive investment. You don't have to keep an eye on the stock market. You don't have to look at any charts or graphs and figure out when to buy, when to sell. You just have this as, as part of your money that you've set aside for future growth, 
and um, it, it's going to work independently and not be affected by uh, interest rates and, and real estate prices and stock market volatility and uh, North Korea and Trump and all those other factors that will impact global uh, markets. And that lets people sleep at night. You know, if, if, <clears throat> if I was listening, I'd be saying, okay, well, uh, let's say I'm 50, right? And my kids are out of college and we have enough, uh, my wife and I have enough assets. You know, we have a good wrangle on our, on our mortgage and life is pretty good. And I have this million dollar policy and I just kind of don't need it anymore. Or I'm listening and I say, I think I want to sell this just because. Is there a sweet spot for somebody that that they might fit or might not fit the profile of someone that you would pick up a policy from? Well, we're very particular about what policies we acquire because we know the kind of return we need to offer our investors, the return potential anyway, to our investors. And so you mentioned, you know, a 50 year old, that's, that's right. going to be probably younger than, than we're ever going to look at. Right. Right. Um, you know, and most of ours are all above age 70, uh, closer to on average to age 80, and uh, not in great health. They, they, they've, you know, had some health conditions that have occurred since they were issued the life insurance policy. Mm -hmm. And so if a person is too young and too healthy, that's probably not going to make a, a very good uh, policy to invest in. Likewise, if a person is too unhealthy or actually too old, those don't make perfect either. And you might think, well, gee, why not? But really, it's that uh, what would we have to pay that person to part with their policy? You sure. know, if we somehow knew I had 10 minutes to live, uh, my guess is you'd be willing to pay quite a lot for my life insurance policy relative to what you're about to get in 10 minutes. And that just doesn't leave enough room to, to provide a good return for our investors. And so we're very uh, careful, do a lot of uh, investigation and underwriting in choosing the policy that we invest in. And you guys actually go through that process. We never have to worry about it. If we're an investor in this particular uh, type of, uh, of an asset, we don't have to go through and, and find the policies. I don't have to research. You handle that. Exactly. That's that's what Reliant LifeShares brings to the table is that knowledge, expertise, and uh, background to be able to uh, find the policies and, and acquire them. We use our own firm capital to acquire them and then open them up for investment. And so we let our investors choose, you know, which policies they'd like to invest in. Most people, you know, take a piece of whatever we have available and therefore get maximum diversification. But uh, we aren't like prepackaging a portfolio and, and saying, trust us, you'll find right. a very high level of disclosure uh, about uh, all of the policies. Um, and we, we only buying policies of strong insurance companies uh, as well. And well, so these are important factors. I think that's important because it sounds like you have Reliant has skin in the game. So they wouldn't sell something to somebody or make an offering to somebody that they wouldn't be party to. Absolutely. When we buy a policy, you know, we place it in trust at UMB Bank, but it's really, you know, we're the owner of that policy. And so we always co-invest alongside our investors. That's important. Um, and at the end of the day, you know, if there's a maturity along the way, um, we're, of course, hoping that uh, it's like the one we just had last week. Um, our investors are going to enjoy an average annual return of about 33%. Uh, over a four and a half year period. So wow. that one worked out very nicely for people. They aren't all going to work out that nicely, so I don't want to set expectations that high. But I bring that up because if, if that one, if you enjoyed that one at 33% per year uh, return and the next one comes in at 4 or 5%, you can see where um, you start to maybe hopefully hone in on that average of a strong single digit or low double digit type return. Uh, maybe even a mid teen type return is, is possible. And you actually go through and provide. Uh, a fairly detailed medical history and family history, et cetera, what you guys have decided were the, the important questions to ask and be answered. And you provide that to the investors so they can read with whatever level of expertise they have. They can read through and see, well, this looks like one that might mature a little sooner rather than later. Correct. We, we disclose all of the information um, that's coming from the third-party underwriting laboratories that are coming up with the life expectancy estimations for these policies. So um, a lot of transparency, a lot of information for the investors. And, and do people, do, do they get an interview? Does somebody go to their house and talk to them, or do they get a phone call or something? Well, um, basically... Or is it just medical records? It's, 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 it's primarily medical records um, and, and questionnaires. And so...
so that's really where the information is coming from. And, and of course, we're, we're HIPAA compliant with that information. So our investors, of course, are not going to get the, the name of the insured uh, or yeah, their personal address information. Or right, which way they that. walk home from school or anything like that. None of that is disclosed, but um, <laughs> all, the, all the pertinent information that will come into play so that a person can uh, you know, have that knowledge about that risk of longevity, it's, it's all disclosed. Yeah. Well, and, and that's that's no different than other financial products where there's there's paperwork that goes with it to tell you about the investment or how it's invested or the style of the investment or how much appetite you should have for this type of risk. So I think it's important that that's all noted. And I love the transparency in it as well. It's not like like you said earlier to your point of, you know, we've prepackaged something and here it is, either buy it or don't. You actually let investors pick the policies and create their own portfolio within that scenario, exactly. if you will. Their own customized portfolio, exactly. And and that gives them a lot of freedom. And so based on their time horizon and their own um, needs, as we know, investing is not one size fits all. So we've tried to make a very flexible model for people to participate in this investment so that they can have access to an investment that has historically been reserved just for the big players. And uh, Reliant always has uh, stuff available. They always have assets and, and policies that are available to be purchased or is there a change where okay we're done and we'll let you know if we have something else coming down the road no we, we've we've had very good inventory um, and that's an important uh, point you want to have multiple policies to invest in and um, you know currently we have an excellent inventory a lot of selection for for investors to um, get a hold of a piece of several different policies and that way uh, they can add to that diversification now of course with that said we do have a reservation system so for each policy we don't oversubscribe them uh, we we have to have a reservation system in place so that we um, don't oversell a policy. So when it's sold out, it's sold out, and um, and then we have other policies available. And do we get a chance to find out uh, what percentage you guys own of that policy? You, yes, we certainly can disclose that. Yep. Yeah. So we say, okay, what percentage do I own, and how many investors? And is there any of that type of like there are twenty seven investors, or there are fourteen, or yes, we can we can disclose that if if a person would like to know that we certainly can. It's not anything too private. Nope. So, so then this is important to ask when, when we are investing in this, and look, this took me a while to, to understand it. And I still, you know, look, I, I still think it's a great idea. I still think you do a great service. I have to go back to the point in time when a, a, one of my first clients, I don't know, probably certainly one of my first 20 clients, and his name was uh, Rich. And he was a retired policeman, and he worked in an area where I used to work before I was ever uh, in law enforcement. So I'd known him from the time I was probably 19, 20 years old. And then, uh, but, and he was already a retired policeman, so he was, he was 20 years older than me or so. And uh, he had gone blind and he had some issues, you know, and so he, he had a tough life and couldn't figure out what was wrong. And then I became in the financial business maybe 10 years later. We still stayed friends and he was one of the first clients that I had that, that bought a, a life insurance policy, $330,000. I remember that. Why? Because that was the mortgage on his house in Palmdale. And at $330,000, uh, he had that policy, but he was struggling a little bit, him and his wife. And then he came down with cancer. And it wasn't just a little cancer. It was like cancer in every part of your body, cancer. So... Meanwhile, he couldn't afford his policy anymore. He was getting ready to, to, to dump it. He couldn't, didn't know what to do with it, couldn't afford to keep it, didn't know how long he was going to live because he had to pay for treatment and co-pays and all that. Well, he ended up selling his policy. It wasn't through us or anything, but, it, but he found it a third party, and he sold it for $190,000. And they gave him $190,000, and he was able to get his affairs in order to make sure most of the house was paid off and refinanced down to where his wife could continue to pay for it uh, under her salary alone. Uh, he, was, he, he bought a house for his wife, uh, or a, a, a car for his mom, and he threw a block party. <laughs> now, to me, this is the silliest thing, but when you think about it, it's probably not that crazy. He got some sort of a permit from the city, shut off the street, got jumpers and food and, and everything you can think of under the sun to throw a block party. Because to him, that was important. He was able to pay for some treatment along the way as well. And when he passed away, whoever the, the, the purchasers were of that policy received that money. But to see the joy in his life during that period of time, and that he was able to, okay, my wife is taken care of. She can afford to stay in the house. I can pay for my medical bills and not leave her with a bunch of debt when I pass away. And, uh, 
those are the little things that kind of remind me, you know what, there is a value here. There is a purpose. It's, it's a bit more than the morbid thing that we first initially kind of may have that gut reaction. So I think there's cases like that, maybe you know of others, but cases like that where if you're an investor in that, on the other side of it, you may never get to meet these people, but certainly you could have had a part in their life to make it a little bit better. Absolutely. Imagine if there was no buyer out there for that policy. If institutions weren't buying them, if our investors weren't buying them, uh, there would be no secondary market for life insurance, and his he wouldn't have had that choice. And, and I love the the block party part of that story yeah, because crazy, huh? You know, li life is about living, right? And and that's uh, what life insurance can do for people. Um, and in certain cir circumstances, though, if they're not able to afford it anymore. Uh, this is an option that may come into play. And so uh, I think at a high level, people first hear this story and they, they want to dismiss it and go, oh, that's, that's a morbid way to make money. It's actually just the opposite. Um, because there is a secondary market for life insurance, stories like that uh, can, can be out there and, and many others. Yeah, there's a little bit of peace of mind that can come when you pass away knowing that you've left your family in a particular situation as opposed to saying, you know, they're going to be burdened with debt in my final years or months. Uh, so there is some value there. And the diligence on the side of Reliant, uh, I'm learning, is that it's not like you go and make a secret offering to somebody and kind of coerce them into selling their policy at a discount when their family would otherwise oh, no, reap yeah. a much larger benefit. I mean, there's some there cognitive uh, part of it. There is where you have beneficiaries involved. Talk a little bit about that so that there's that, that settling feeling across the, the board with the family. Yes. Uh, I, I believe 43 states you know, regulate the sale of a life insurance policy. It's, so it, that is a heavily regulated transaction. So when a senior is considering selling their policy, um, there's a lot that has to occur and, and special entities known as life settlement brokers or providers that need to be involved. And so uh, it's a very heavily regulated transaction. And that's important because you would not want um, you know, people that shouldn't or don't want to sell their life insurance policy to be taken advantage of. And sure. uh, first and foremost, a lot of times what happens is when children or beneficiaries find out that mom or dad's about to sell the policy, they might step up and say, hey, you know, let's keep that in the family and we'll pay the premiums, we'll help out with the premiums. And so they never hit the secondary market. And that's fine. That's an example where the policy was still needed or wanted. It's only these policies that uh, there really aren't any other options and it's about to go in the trash can or be cashed in for a fraction of what it might be able to be sold for. And and at the other side of it, the reason we're really offering investors the ability is, is as I said, life is about living. If you've got um, another market downturn coming and you see 30 or 40 or 50 percent of your wealth evaporate, um, imagine having a chunk of that money protected in something different so that if the market does reach out and, and take that away from you, perhaps you're Reliant Life Shares component uh, will behave independently and not be affected. And that's really the other side of that coin as well. Yeah, it gives us an opportunity to have something that's sitting off to the side that is not related whatsoever to the stock market, real estate market, bond market. As we mentioned, you know, China or Korea or Germany or Great Britain, we don't care what's taking place. This is an outside entity. So we're going to continue when we come back with Brian Clark from Reliant Life Shares. I'm Eric Hallaby, and that's Jeff Gerard, and your place for news, talk, and information. This is Total Financial Solutions, Safer Money Hour. Hey, welcome back to the show, Total Financial Solutions, Safer Money Hour. Eric Hallaby and Jeff Gerard, special guest Brian Clark from Reliant Life Shares, an opportunity for you to diversify your assets, your retirement accounts, or future accounts that you're saying, hey, I want to have some part of my money off to the side, not related to the market especially today when things are at all-time highs. Uh, look, the, the rule is to buy low and sell high. Of course, you know that, right? Not buy at the bottom and sell at the top. So once there's a profit and there's a reasonable profit and you say, you know, I've kind of made a little bit, I've made enough, I've made my money back, finally made up for all those fees that I've had to pay, whatever it might be with some of these accounts, uh, the goal is to take some of that off the top. And that's what Reliant Life Shares offers. It's, it's an opportunity to diversify, to spread out, to kind of lessen that risk of watching the market go up. We're rich and then we're poor. We made it and then we lost it. That is not a healthy feeling, right? You have been around somebody in your family that has lost money on purpose or on accident who've made decisions 
that didn't turn out so good, especially in 2001, 2, maybe 2007, 8, 9. Those periods of time are, are kind of scary. If you do the math backwards, we're kind of overdue for something like that. So how do you protect yourself? Well, here's one of the ways to do it, and that is to reduce some of the risk. And, you know, Reliant Life Shares may be right for you. Uh, Brian, give me a bit of a recap. Like, how does that break down when we're looking at this as a part of our portfolio? Kind of, for, for folks just joining us or trying to figure this out, Reliant Life Shares does what? Reliant Life Shares offers uh, individual California qualified investors the ability to add some real diversification to their portfolio. Uh, they, we, we give them the opportunity to invest in something that historically has primarily only been used by the big institutions, uh, the Blackstones of the world, um, Warren Buffett, um, you know, all the large institutions, Goldman Sachs, Credit Suisse, Deutsche Bank. I mean, these all firms have all uh, been using this, but the individual investor really doesn't get access to this sort of investment. And the goal is to insulate some of your portfolio from uh, the stock market risk, maybe real estate risk, everything else that you are currently invested in. And, and when you say, uh, you know, Warren Buffett, people forget who he is. Warren Buffett, his first rule in, in investing, most people don't even know this. You know what it is? Have you heard it? I believe is don't lose money. That's right. First, don't <laughs> lose money. Not, oh, well, take big risks, make make double-digit returns, listen to what your stockbroker has to say, because they never, they're never they never wrong, or hey, diversify, buy 20 mutual funds and stocks, bonds instead of one. That, that's not his advice. His advice is first, don't lose money. Why does that matter to you? Because for many people, that is not their first rule. Their first rule is something simple, and that is, Make as much as you can. Take as much risk as you can. Grow your wealth as fast as you can. Well, it doesn't. It's not the same for somebody like him. And he happens to be one of the larger investors in this. Any idea of how much he puts in or owns? Or uh, last I heard, you know, I think he's still contributing, you know, hundreds of millions of dollars uh, most years. So I believe that wow. is uh, significant. And wow. you know, again, as a percentage. Of as, as, as a percentage of his overall uh, wealth and, and his firms, that's, you know, uh, a slice, just like we're encouraging uh, most clients to consider if they qualify, if they've got the time, if they understand, um, you know, what this is and how it can help them. I think a lot of people would think, hey, a 5 or 10% slice could make sense for my portfolio, which means if I've got a million dollars and uh, and a chunk of that I don't need for a while, I can, you know, unplug it from the stock market, plug it into life shares, and uh, probably, you know, enjoy a solid single, hopefully, you know, we can't guarantee returns, of course, but a solid single digit return, maybe a low double digit return even over the coming, you know, 10, 20 years, all the while not have that money go up and down with the stock market. Um, to your point about not losing money, I saw a statistic uh, recently that uh, the market, the average investor spends over three quarters of their time really just getting back to even after a downturn. 76% wow. of the time is the st statistic I saw. And um, that's a lot of time spent just trying to get back to where the market was before the last downfall. And the question is, when's the next one coming? Isn't that sad, folks? A lot of a lot of people come to my office and they'll say, "We just finally got back. We're just about break even. We're almost where we were." And the idea is to find, make money, grow your wealth. Especially, we have heard experts time and again will say things like, "Dollar cost average." Okay, fine. You have a work retirement account. You're adding money every every couple of weeks, every month. You're buying when things are high, medium, low, back up to medium, back up to high. By that consistent purchasing, you're smoothing out the uh, the purchase risk by not putting all your eggs in a basket at the time when it's the most expensive. Fine. But what about that retirement account that has sat there, that has gone up with the market, feed all the while, and then it goes down and feed all the while? You see, when you calculate your returns in your retirement account, your old IRA or, or, or retirement account, you do so on the money that you have made from the beginning. In other words, I put in 100,000 15 years ago, today it's worth 145 or 250, wonderful. But you don't calculate the fees the same way. You only stop saying it's for a year. Why don't you add up the fees that you've paid those same 15 years? One, one and a half, one and a quarter, two, three, we've seen four and a half. Add up those fees, not per year, because you don't make your... In when you earn interest per year, that doesn't go in the back pocket and now never can go up and down again. Be very careful, because some of these uh, <laughs> accounts, retirement accounts, go up and down the whole time, and you make money, lose money up to... The fees don't act the same way. 
So when you're saying, I'm going to take some of this off to the side, I'm going to move some of this into a bucket, you may not get the same rates of return if you pick the next greatest Facebook stock thing, right? Well, maybe you picked the wrong one. Maybe you picked the right one. This is to reduce that risk. Brian, uh, how do folks, if they're interested in doing this, how do they get a hold of you? Certainly they can get a hold of us and we'll, we'll put them in touch with Reliant, uh, but certainly they can get a hold of you directly. Well, sure, Eric. We, we definitely um, encourage um, our investors to work through you know a life licensed agent uh, like yourself. Uh, that's where the, you'll get, I think, the best service. But if they do have questions, by all means, visit our website, which is www.reliantlifeshares.com, or they certainly can call the home office in Sherman Oaks, ask for me, and we'd be more than happy to put them in touch either with a local agent uh, like yourself or, or help them and answer any and all questions they have. That phone number is 818 818- Seven eight eight one nine zero four, and that's ReliantLifeShares.com. R E L I A N T LifeShares.com. Uh, you know the founder of your company, and, and uh, you guys have been in business now for how long? Uh, we incorporated in two thousand eleven. Started uh, offering investments in two thousand twelve. And then in the industry as a whole, how long have you guys been involved in this industry? As uh, the the yeah, the principles of the principles. firm have, you know, more than a dozen years um, in just this one unique asset class. And and that's important because the deep connections they have to be able to uh, acquire good policies, uh, offer them up, know what to look for, that's important. And you want that expertise. And this is the only thing we do. You know, we're not trying to, you know, juggle a lot of different offerings. This is really uh, our sole focus. And, um, and just like our, our slogan or tagline says, we're bringing institutional profitability to the individual investors. That's, uh, that's really our purpose, is to allow folks to invest in something that they otherwise have been really shut out of. And when we say institutions, that's, that's a really code word, if you will, for pension funds, for uh, union pension, for state, city, county pensions, for mutual funds, and for other types of asset classes for insurance companies themselves. Because remember this, if you're a pension or you're an insurance company, you can't decide to not pay next month. You have to pay. If, if, it's, if you're getting a paycheck of $2,000 a month every month, uh, that 2000 better come in. This isn't a, a maybe or not. So if the market happens to be low, when your pension check is due, how does the pension, how does the mutual fund, if you want to cash in, how do these people and these organizations make sure that you have money available? They diversify. And that's part of their their way and reason to stay in business. Well, and that's right. And so sometimes you see these uh, big pools of money go out and take a lot of risk because they're trying to catch up sometimes for some of the losses. And by investing in some of these types of assets, having that ability to zig when other things are zagging, to your point, Brian, um, I think this is a very healthy part of a portfolio. Well, we had a client come in this morning and, and told me about a uh, one of the pensions that he had as a part of his income that had lost 75% wow. of the pension assets. That means the local came in and they said, hey guys, we mismanaged the money and we lost 75% of the money. And that means guys and gals that were already vested in the unions 10, 12, 15, 25 years had to start all over again. Yeah. Now that's a that's a pretty scary thing to do. So you have to take care of yourself. It's nice that you have somebody or an organization or something that's going to be counting on you, but you have to take care of yourself. Brian, can I have the phone number one more time for ReliantLifeShares.com? Absolutely. That's 818-788-1904. Folks, uh, Reliant Life Shares, if you have any questions, you can always go to HometownStation.com, send us a, an email or a question, click on Total Financial Solutions, and we'll shoot you over to Reliant and pass that on if you need. You can always get a hold of us at tfswealth.com stands for Total Financial Solutions or tfswealth.com. I'm Eric Halby. That's Jeff Gerard. Every week at this time, we come to you talking about your family's finances, helping you get out of debt, manage money, plan for retirement, and even think a little bit differently where maybe the institutions, maybe your broker, maybe the mutual fund world, maybe the stock market world, maybe they're thinking just a little bit differently and it's not in your interest. Thanks for listening. Eric Halby on your place for News Talk and Information, AM 1220, KHTS.